G'day folks, it's Rob here and welcome to another renovation clip and I've also included a bit of an update of right down the back for you folks as well. Uh, before we get started though, just wanted to let you know that I've um, swapped over websites um, from one hosting place to another. Um, yeah, the website's pretty much all live if you want to check it out. Uh, there'll be a link just up in the corner there, also down in the description below. Uh, so without any more um, nattering on, I thought what I'd do is just give you a bit of an update on what's going on with the renovations upstairs. Then we'll head downstairs and then I'll um, yeah, insert a bit of a clip I shot for our supporters um, yeah, just at the end. So the last time you guys had a look upstairs, they had the frame up and had knocked down a few walls and taken out some plaster. Well, I'm happy to say quite a lot's happened since then. The uh, roof joists are on and we now have tin on top of the frame. And not only that, we have some support walls up and they just need to wrap it in sarking. And we also have a roof over our new deck area. So we're pretty happy about this. It's um, going to have a couple of down lights in it and a fan to earn us some green credits with the government. Um, so that's why those wires are hanging out of the roof there. They've got a couple of boards down on the ground here, which allows me to walk out here to give you a bit of a look at what we're gonna see out in our backyard. Um, yeah, obviously that soil's not going to be there, but it will give, definitely give us a bird's eye view of the yard compared with before. So we're, we're actually pretty happy that this roof is on. It's um, going to make it very cool to sit out here uh, through the summer months. And uh, well, I dare say we're going to end up spending a lot of our time out here. B just said that you can already feel the difference um, standing under here, obviously because it's only got the sarking compared with out there. So. Yeah, we um, are really looking forward to moving back in, uh, mainly because we've been out of the place for six months now. And six months living in a small little cramped cottage um, sort of does your head in a bit when there's a lot of stuff you want to be doing out there. But obviously I can't you know, have a lot of access to what's going on out the back. But anyway, uh, what we might do is we might go for a bit of a wander downstairs and I'll bring you up to speed on all the progress that's happened down there. Downstairs here, things have changed quite a bit. As you can see, we have... Um, the room's downstairs now wrapped in the sarking. Uh, it's silver on the inside, it's a uh, reflective insulation. Over here we have a load of boards. We've got about 630 metres of boards. That's lineal metres of boards. We had to paint both sides, so I worked out we painted 1.2 kilometres of board um, over probably about three or four days. Bianca and I had a crack on last weekend to get most of them done, and then Kira helped me through the week. So that was a, a bit of a job and a half, uh, but that's all done now. And behind it there, you can see a retaining wall. Now this retaining wall is a little bit above and beyond what would normally be required because we have a driveway on the other side. So what they had to do to begin with was dig out a foundation that is roughly um, one meter wide or three foot wide that goes underneath the driveway. Uh, from there, they poured a slab and on top of that slab, they've built a core filled block wall. So it's basically the cinder blocks or besser blocks, and then they um, core fill it with cement and then put some nice capping on top. So that wall there is a little bit more over-engineered than the original. Uh, originally, we were just going to have a link block wall um, like we were behind the house. Um, but yeah, we've decided that it needed something a little bit more substantial. Uh, especially um, considering that we will have cars parking and driving up and down there all the time. So there will be a little bit of earth movement there. So this thing here should last for many a decade, hopefully. Along the front here, it hasn't happened yet. They just arrived the other day, but we've got a link block retaining wall going in that will meet up with this retaining wall here. Um, it really just needs to hold the earth back. So it's nothing, you know, too structural involved. A lot of the water as it runs off will be diverted elsewhere. So there will be virtually no erosion there. Uh, the link block wall itself is actually starting round about just in front of that line there. And then we'll be going up. So anywhere from an inch to um, in three quarters of an inch to an inch backwards on a bit of a slope. And then above there, we're going to end up putting concrete pad and water tanks there in the future. Just around this side, they've um, managed to put in the door, or there's a door here and another door under the house, and another one I'll show you in a minute. Uh, they got some of the hardwood uh, weatherboards up. There's hardwood on this side of the house and on the other side of the house. This gets the summer sun, uh, sorry, winter sun, the other side gets the summer sun. Um, so that's why we're using hardwood down here. They've dug a little bit of a, um, a trench that'll take the wastewater from just the path, because there's going to be a path here. And underneath this, they have the sewage line coming out. 
Um, that's Pauline laughing at me for correcting me. Um, the sewage line coming out from underneath the house that goes into a deeper pit that then connects down to the uh, main line which is there and this is just going to be a um, the little grate that sits underneath the tap they're just yeah none of this is finished the tap isn't going to be that high so that's all been backfilled in we have a load of pipe work here uh, a lot of this pipe work will be taking the rainwater from the gutters down to a pit down in the backyard um, this pit here is only going to be, well it's going to be there all the time, but it's only temporary for us because we will have rainwater in there, uh, rainwater tanks. Um, this will, has to be filled with um, gravel or rock and then it, what it does is the water comes in, fills it up and it slowly percolates out through the ground. And just to show you what they had to do, they had to bury some of my garden beds. <laughs> um, they're just, just not enough room. A lot of people say, you know, we must live on a huge block, but we don't. So they've uh, pushed against some of the gardens down the back. Uh, Bianca is standing. Hello, Bianca. Bianca is um, standing at the corner where we've got another line of um, this same pipe coming down that we'll be meeting up at this junction here to come down into the um, seepage pit. So, yeah, like I said, as soon as we get rainwater tanks, uh, the ones out the front and another one possibly over that away in front of the aquaponics, yeah, all that rainwater will be diverted. This is another door, this one here um, just leads into some storage from the outside underneath the back stairs. For the time being it's just going to be garden tools and that sort of thing. So yeah, there's a bit of a roundup on what's going on downstairs. So that's pretty much all it for a bit of a roundup on the house. Um, now what we'll do is I'll give you a bit of a look at a clip, an update clip I filmed for the supporters as Patreon, subscribe star and YouTube members. G'day folks and thanks. Um, it's just looking at some of the garden beds down the back. As the sun's about to set here so I'm not going to have enough time and we're pretty flat out shopping for the, um, the house this weekend. So sorry folks, there'll be a more in-depth roundup on the garden and all that sort of thing once the earth has moved and I've sorted it out a bit. Um, but hopefully there'll be an aquaponic clip coming to you before then. But anyway, I'll catch you at the end of the clip. G'day supporters. Um, thought I'd just give you a bit of a quick look at what's going on down the back here. As you can see, the Owen knockers are really taken off in the aquaponics. As has the Gallingill. I'm pretty sure I've shown you both of them before. And this little uh, volunteer tomato that you may have seen in the edge of some clips is doing okay. If this is going to be one of those little red ones again, I'm going to pull it out. I have a feeling it is going to be. And we'll just wait and see how sweet they are before I um, decide to pull it out. I thought what I'd do today is I'll uh, walk you through the jungle down the back. So we've got a Gallingal pot here. And we have the Okinawan spinach over there. A pigeon pea that's come up out of nowhere. And bananas. And down to my storage tanks. And the black turmeric. And the sunshine chilli that's popping up over the top. And just to show you, there's a whole load of the sunshine chilies popping up down the bottom here. Another one over there. Um, they're just bits and pieces that have um, sprouted from the fruit that I didn't save. There was that clip I did a while back on um, harvesting these guys for the paste. Um, actually, I don't know if I even published that one. But um, yeah, I just dropped some of the manky fruit around the bottom just to see what would happen. And obviously, yeah, they haven't done too bad. Oh, there's one I knocked off walking down earlier. Um, this, this plant here has come up all by itself and it's had a fruit on it. It may have had two fruit on it. That may have been one of the ones that I knocked off. And down here, further, we have another one. And this one I noticed the other day had a bit of a fruit on it. So we're getting a couple of these little sunshines popping up everywhere. I'll give you a look at the coffee tree. I was a little bit concerned that we were going to lose more fruit than we did. I think I showed you um, supporters a while back that some had dried off. But yeah, she looks to be holding on to the majority of the fruit, by far the majority. I was actually a little bit concerned about these guys because I hadn't watered them all week because we had all the rain on the weekend. But yeah, they didn't look too dehydrated. Actually, they don't look dehydrated at all. Um, so it's uh, Thursday afternoon today. You guys will probably see this tomorrow. Other plants down the back here, uh, they're doing okay. The, um, <laughs> the bed I tried to let die, it's taken off, the Gallingall. And this is a Katook or a sweet leaf. Um, I did have one planted in here years ago, but it's... Um, it was pulled out, so I don't know if this is a seed remnant or a root remnant, but it came up last year in there. And the other bed I was just going to let go was this one over here that has um, some turmeric, so little bits and pieces left over from a clip from a couple of years back, a big turmeric harvest from there, and some, um, yeah, some Egyptian spinach. Uh, these are the plants we were breaking branches off for our salads. And down here, the turmeric. Uh, she hasn't done that crash hot this year, but I dare say 
that this um, pawpaw or papaya up here has been rather hungry. Uh, something else has been hungry because I noticed one of the fruit had been knocked off. Actually, this is one that they didn't get to. Oh, they've stuck their claws in it. There's little marks where they've stuck their claws in it. But a bat has got up there, I would say, and um, yeah, devoured that one there. So I missed it, not coming down over the last week. Uh, by the look of it, it's fairly fresh. So anyway, there's a couple more there that I'll be able to pick soon. That one on the far side looks like it's getting a bit of a blush to it. So they'll come off soon. I don't know if I mentioned before to you guys too, but we got no mangoes, not a single one on this um, tree this year, which is a real big disappointment. Just has to do with the weather more than anything, I'd say. But yeah, I thought I'd just give you a bit of a quick look at um, what's going on down the back here, because we haven't been down the back into the jungle for quite some time. And Gallangal there is still doing okay. And this aloe vera really likes this position. Oh, the ginger over here, we saw some really nice flowers form on these little stalks over the last week or so. I've got some really nice close-ups of all different angles so I can use them as stock footage uh, for the future. And down in here you can see there's even more flower heads. Uh, more flower heads there. Whoop, sorry camera. <laughs> um, more flower heads over here. So they're just absolutely everywhere through this patch. And yeah, I'm really grateful for this um, wicking bed because if it wasn't for this one we'd have no ginger next season. So this is the one with the mix of the, um, the Cambodian and this taller one up the back is a normal um, ginger and it's also got the Chinese keys um, this one here uh, planted over there as well as um, the smaller one down in that corner which I think I may have lost but such is um, yeah so that's a bit of a look uh, just down the back here give you a look at these bees as well they seem to be doing okay I did have an issue with them um, last week I noticed there was a load of ants crawling all over the hive so what I did was I went down and got some grease. I decided to get some marine grease and just put uh, two bands of that around there fairly thick and that stops the ants from crawling up there and into the hive. So that pretty much will looked after those guys. A couple of small chilies there I could nick for dinner. So I just had to fight my way out from that jungle behind me there. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed that little bit of a look at uh, what's growing on down the back. And yeah, there's, there's not really a lot to see out the front here because they've pushed a whole pile of dirt all over where my gardens are well that they're not on the gardens as such but it's pretty hard to get over there actually i've got to turn that tap off it's pretty hard to get over there so what i'll do is i'll just grab the uh, squirter nozzle on the hose and try and fill up um those trays over there so so there you go folks i do hope you've enjoyed this little bit of a look at the renovations and also a bit of a, a quick uh, catch up on what's going on here with the aquaponics and other bits and pieces down the back. Uh, once again, I do need to thank those super contributors who do um, support us very generously through Subscribestar and Patreon. There's a link of those super contributors down below. If you could go over and uh, have a look at their websites and Facebook groups, I'd really appreciate it. Um, show them some love and say that Rob sent you. On other news, there will be an aquaponics clip coming up um, soon. There's a, one or two I'm working on at the moment. I just got to find the time to come around here and uh, film them, or I might just film them on the veranda at the other um, at the cottage we'll wait and see but anyway i'll pretty much will leave it there i do hope you're all well and happy in your own gardens and aquaponics are booming and i'll catch you online cheers folks have a top one